YouTube, welcome back. How's it going? John here at Herman Woodworks. Back to the big maple slab table, trying to wrap things up. So, I already got crack lacking because it's coming up on Christmas here, and I really want to get this table to the client. Um, I'm really hoping to have it to him before Christmas. It'd be a nice little surprise. And so I went ahead. Right now we are putting in the bow ties. Trying to support where this slab has a crack going through it just to make sure after it's epoxy that we don't end up getting any future splitting or that. So um, let me walk you through what we got going on here. All right, anybody that's been following the channel. So this was a big ant's nest that ended up being a flying squirrel's nest and actually i think a uh, owl was living in here because i ended up pulling a bone out of these one of these hollows while i was cleaning this up but anywho so need to stabilize this crack it's going up the middle of the table here so like i said these i've already gotten started these are already milled out chiseled up and they're set and ready to be tapped in and glued i've just got them setting here so I went and decided where I wanted them. Um, I had cut the I had cut the bows out, the bow ties out ahead of time, laid them out, established where I wanted them, marked them up. I'm just kind of going along. So the last one I just want to go over with you guys, I have right up here. We're going to go through milling this one out, chiseling it up, and getting this set. All right, especially on a project where you're going to be doing multiple bow ties, if you do it like I do and lay them out ahead of time, as you can see, I mark all mine, one, and then I pick like a side. Mine I have arrowing out towards the edge. Two, three, and four. I do that because if you don't cut these perfectly symmetrical when you mark them and then clean it out, and then you go, if you don't have them marked and you lay them all out, they might not fit exactly how you want them to. So it's best just to know that this one was sitting like this. When you put it back in, it's going to match your lines perfect. All right. So, all right. So bow tie number four here, you see it's marked out. What you're going to need is I have my DeWalt plunge router. I already had it set to uh, three quarter inch depth. This is way overkill. I don't need to go this deep but I really want to make sure this is strong. When you're doing your bow ties, you have to make sure your long grain's going this way. If you have cross grain and it's going this way, it's not serving a purpose. It's just going to rip apart with the rest of the slab. So this is the bit you're going to be using, something along these lines like this from a major box store, uh, up spiral bit, quarter inch wide. It can go up to one inch deep. I, like I said, I have mine set at three quarter, three quarter inch deep piece of wood. I think this is oak I'm putting in. It's probably sacrilege putting oak with a maple table, but I know it's strong. So, yep. All right, the next thing I'm doing is I'm taking my pencil marks and I'm laying this straight edge on here. And then I'm taking a razor and just breaking that top layer of the wood, just breaking those top fibers. So that way when I'm routering it, I'm just getting that nice clean break right there on the surface. I mean, you can get away if you got a really sharp chisel too with just doing it that way, you know, just using the pencil and then breaking it later. But just in case I get any tear out or anything, that's why I'm just kind of doing that on the top. All right, so I got that scratched up with the razor. Um, next thing is going to be hook the vacuum up to my route, my plunge router here and start dropping in and hogging out this, all this extra material. If you're really ambitious or accurate, I guess you could say, I've been sneaking up really close to these lines. Some people would rather just get relatively close and then do the work, rest of the work with your chisel. I mean, it all depends on your confidence level. See, see if you're feeling froggy. Um, one of the biggest things I can say is be very cognizant of when you're going back and forth with the with the bit of making sure you're not doing like um, a climbing cut so all of a sudden you might be doing good and all of a sudden it'll just grab and go um, you know you just be very cognizant of which way you're working with your bit you know everybody with your routers you know it's spinning this way so when you're first coming across it's just biting on both sides so it's going to stay steady but once you 
come across this and there's that channel and you're coming back on the other side, you know, that's, it's, it's biting into it. So it's, you just have to be very careful of watching which way so it doesn't all of a sudden just pull your bit and get away from the line and screw everything up. All right, so I just wanted to take a quick break in it, show everyone exactly, get in here and see what we're looking at. Like I said, if you feel confident and you can get right in on that line, then so be it. It's up to you. So uh, how risky you want to be with it. I'm still going to go in there and smooth smooth this up with the chisel a little bit. I'm going to come in still with the router and take some more of this out of there so I'm not really hacking away. But um, yeah, I'm going to fire the router back up, take the rest of this out. Get the rest of it out of there. So that's where we're at right now after routering. Um, like I said, we're just going to have to come in here with the chisel, hit these corners, maybe just take the straight edge to this just to fl make them dead flat. But uh, otherwise, yeah, we really got most of the material out of there. Like I said, mo some people, you might not have a steady hand. You don't have to get that close. Just do more with your chisel work. But yeah, let's do some chiseling and get this totally finished up. Put your chisel up to that line, and there you go. All right, so that is pretty much all cleaned up. Last thing I want to go over too, well, with the, this is, you know, like I said, I marked this. This is bow tie four, arrow down this way. One of the last things, instead of just trying to really hammer these in, this one's a little tight. I'm going to need to actually clean up maybe a hair here more, but a lot of people will kind of feather these down. So this being the top is I'm going to sand a little heavy. I mean, you could flat chisel it just to kind of bevel this down. So that way it just, when you're putting this in here, it'll end up kind of just uh, self wedging itself in there. Once you glue it up and pound her home. All right. Just showing you real quick what I mean by beveling. Like I said, this being the top. So I'm going to want to 
take a little more off this bottom edge so that this top stays the same and just flush just so it's if it's the same in it's going to fight itself going in so what i do like i said is i take my little sanding block i mean if you want to do machine method with like a some kind of sander that i just like to do this so i'm kind of a little more controlled with it but i'll just kind of go along and like I said, you can kind of see, trying to see in there, just kind of beveling it down. You're not looking to hog off a whole bunch of material. Just mostly trying to take all the little burrs off when you were cutting it. And sometimes I'll just push this down like this. Like I said, top, bottom, kind of beveling it a hair. Like I said, not trying to take off a ton, but maybe takes off probably not even like a 30 second just to smooth it up. And then I'll even kind of bevel the bottom corners just because when you're chiseling in there, it's, it's going to be real hard to actually get all the way to the bottom and get it 100% clean on the bottom. The top will be clean, but bottom, it's really hard to just get that totally perfect like that. So I just kind of bevel that in a little bit. Awesome. All right, so I'll just walk you through the last bow tie here. I already got the other three set. Um, you can see they're sitting up about maybe like a 16th high. Uh, just remember you'd rather, I mean, this is gonna be on the bottom side of the table in my instance, so not super critical, but you'd rather have them be a little proud, a little high like this, than low. So this will be easy enough just to sand down, scrape down before we apply the finish. So let's go through the last one here. And just like so. And it's dropping a good halfway in there. I'm happy with that. So we'll end up getting the glue nice and tight. Glue all this, tap her in, be done with her. All right, so get in there with some wood glue. You want to be pretty liberal with it. And then if you either have an old paintbrush or I have one of these tight bond brushes, they're decent. This is it's almost like your barbecue grill brush here and then get in here spread this glue all around make sure you work it up on the sides get it all in all the corners I don't want that right there in the crack though because that'll get seen. A little on the sweater. A little bit on your clothes or ain't doing it right. All right. So got that in there. I'm of the mindset that I also like to take, if I have a little bit extra here in the I like to put just a little bit on the actual bow tie. I'm one of the gluers that I'd like to Put a little bit on the piece I'm actually putting in. So really make sure I got some on all of it. Like I said, just a little bit there, just so I'm not getting a ton of squeeze out. And and sit that in there. I like to take a chunk of two by four, little scraps two by four, just so when I'm tapping this in, I don't end up actually damaging the look or the break. So I'll just give it a solid tap. Boingo. All 
All right. So like I said, you see it's like about a 16th, might almost be an almost a whole eighth high. But tomorrow after this dries up, get this sanded down, and uh, we're going to be ready for the next step here. The next long-awaited step will be epoxy. Um, I'm going to do a little more sanding tomorrow, a little more cleanup on this, but I won't subject you guys to that. But uh, yeah, the next step, epoxy. I cannot wait because after that gets done, put these legs on and be ready to deliver this table. I cannot wait. So once again, if you guys are new, please subscribe and I will talk to everyone again soon.